Congratulations on getting started with R. Make sure to visit the VetSync project website to download the notes for this video, as well as have access to other videos, tutorials, and documents. To get started, you should visit the R project website and download R. Choose any mirror close to you and download the version that is appropriate for the computer you have. Once you have downloaded and installed R, download and install R Studio. R Studio will always recognize the most recent version of R installed in your computer. If you open R directly, what you see is the R console. It gives you the full power of R, but it's not a very user-friendly interface. It's just a window where you can type in commands and once you press enter, you get the answer or the command is executed. Note the difference between the lines that start with the greater than sign, which are the lines where you typed in a command, and the number lines, which are the lines of output. Also note that R uses dots for decimals, no matter what are the settings in your computer. You can use any mathematical operation, operator that you're used to, but note that to divide, you should use a slash. Using the column will actually create a sequence. Of course, we don't want to use R just as a calculator, but to handle data and statistical analysis. So it's usual to have an editor where you save the analysis you want to do. It's your script, it's a guide to every step you want to take, and then you send those steps to R. You can do more than one step at a time. I'll just paste here for now. In this case, R showed no output because I didn't ask it to see anything. I just asked it to assign the value of free to a variable, which in our language we're going to call objects, to an object called A and to assign the result of this operation to, a, to an object called B. So now, in the R memory, which we're going to call environment, there is an object called A, and if I want to see it, I have to call by typing its name and pressing enter, and an object B. That's how we use data most of the time, by storing it in objects and then we can call them and, of course, do operations with them. This that I have been calling the assign operator is typed with a less than sign, a dash, and then the value. It doesn't matter if I put spaces or not. The effect is exactly the same as using the equal sign. But we'll stick to this operator because it makes clear the direction of what we're doing. See, for instance, this is my current A and B. If I type this in, I'm not checking if A is equal to B. I'm actually assigning the value of B to A. A and B are now the same. If I had used the assigning operator, it would be more clear the direction of how the value is being attributed. You can call your objects any name you want, as long as you don't use spaces and you don't start with a number. That's when you got an error. R is also case sensitive. So those two objects, one with small o and the other one with capital O, are actually different objects. If you start typing something and you make a mistake, you can always just press the escape key to cancel. You may notice that sometimes I recall some comments I've given before. I do that using the up arrow on my keyboard. I can navigate through previous comments using the up and down key. Even with the use of a parallel editor, it's really cumbersome to do calculations directly in R. So we're going to stick to R Studio. Here on the bottom left, what you're seeing is the R console we were seeing before. It's the exact same thing. You can type in commands or create variables.
but RStudio makes everything integrated so more user friendly. Here on the bottom right, you have packages which we're going to learn how to use. File man management and all the plots are also going to show here. Here on the top right, you see the environment, so the objects that you have created and that are now in memory are displayed here. And the editor, which we had been using a parallel one on the right, is now integrated here. So in this editor, we can write our scripts of all the analysis we want to do. Once I write things here, nothing happens on the console. I decide when I want to send those and execute them in R. I can do that by selecting the commands I want to execute and pressing run, or just holding the cursor in a line. And if I press run, then the whole line gets sent to the console. So I can do that one line at a time. I can select multiple lines at a time and all of them will be executed. You can see that the objects were created here. Source will just run the whole thing at a time. We'll later learn how to use this editor to keep our scripts really organized. You can save your script anywhere you want in your computer. Save our scripts with the extension .r. For the next videos, we'll cover a bit more about basic math in R and later learn how to handle the data that goes in and out and simulate some real statistical analysis. For now, just make sure to visit the VETSIM project website to download the notes that review what was seen in this video and don't hesitate to send me an email if you have any questions.